former U.S. Undersecretary for African Affairs, Jendai Fraser, recently announced the launch of the East African Exchange at this year's World Economic Forum in Davos. It was the first part of the regional exchange intended to increase transparency in the region's commodity markets through private-led, uh, um, or rather private sector-led investment. She explained its vision to us alongside Kuziviwa Maguniwa, the strategist for the East Africa Exchange. At the moment, the markets are fragmented. I'm talking about commodity markets. Uh, there is no common union that otherwise solves uh, queries that may arise during the course of cross-border trade. Uh, and there's so much, uh, there's a lack of liquidity. Mm -hmm. So this project, we've sought to have to bring it together in order for us to get people uh, run the market on a formalized basis. There are lots of middlemen involved, and therefore, the person that suffers at the end of the day is, is your last person. Yeah. The middlemen are making exorbitant uh, markups. So we believe that if the market became formalized to mm -hmm. start with, then it would be a good opportunity for everybody else in the global village to understand that East Africa is the place to be. I think East Africa has um, some dominance on the world map. You are aware that Rwanda, for instance, is amongst the biggest growers of tea and coffee in the world. And recently, the, the country undertook to join a cartel team in order to influence the price of uh, coffee and tea on the global village. So it's a sign of more and more things to come out of East Africa that will have a bigger bearing, not only on the region, but we believe on the globe as a whole. Ambassador, let me bring you in here. Um, you define your company, Africa Exchange Holdings, as a startup. You starting out. Um, you in your you know baby steps uh, phase. Um, what is the most important um, you know boxes that you need to tick to ensure that what you offering as an opportunity for investors, both on the African continent and globally, that you have to tick um, in order to get this company going? Well, we of course the first thing is capital, um, and our partners are brought to capital. But we also want not just financial capital, but also intellectual capital. And so we come with a particular philosophy. And that philosophy is that we want to get lasting institutions that are sustainable. Um, and that's why we're bringing long-term patient capital. We're also bringing the expertise from around the world. We want it to be a world-class exchange, competitive globally. And so our technology partner is NASDAQ, which has you know, um, a stellar reputation. Um, so it brings confidence um, to the buyers and sellers who will be on the exchange. We are also bringing the talent of Africans themselves. We have the former managing director of the South Africa Futures Exchange, Rod Blounden. He's part of our team. Um, Stella Calanzo, who was the uh, former CEO of the Kenya Capital Markets Authority and who was also the chairman of the East Africa Regional Authorities, um, Capital Market Authorities is on our team. And so we're bringing that type of talent from all over Africa. And that's been facilitated by the philosophy of the Rwandan government where President uh, Kagame said, I don't care where you bring people from, let's just make this an institution that delivers value and especially delivers value to the smallholder farmer. Um, in Rwanda, but across East Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you, uh, uh, Mr. Muganiwa, you speak with um, uh, private sector players, um, and of course, you have to convince them that East Africa is the place to be. Um, given the fact that you kind of starting out, what is it that you think can attract people to come to East Africa? Given that um, you know you've got the JSC, you've got SADC, um, what is it that is unique about East Africa that would um, allow people to diversify and and to seek better opportunities and, and greater returns? Karima. Um in coming up with this project, we've considered uh, a number of factors. Uh, many of the factors are to, are to do with exchanges that have been launched in the past that have been a success. I'm talking here the likes of Shanghai Commodity Exchange. I'm talking the likes of Chicago Board of Trade, um, Hong Kong, and so on and so on. Now, we have learned a great deal on what has led to them being successful in that kind of uh, adventure. But we've also learned, likewise, what other exchanges that have not done so well have actually failed to do. So we've come a very long way, perhaps not in distance, but in an analysis of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So 
with that in mind, we have seen that the success of those that have done so in the past has been hinged on uh, two issues of clearing and warehousing. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeking to go a step better to say, okay, in East Africa, whereas, for instance, the JSC case, con more concentration is on white maize, yellow maize, sunflowers, soybeans, and so on. East Africa is more popular for other commodities, such as your tea, your coffee, your cereals, oil, and, and even minerals. So we're seeking over and above to uh, pacify issues to do with uh, clearing and um, um, warehousing. warehousing as mm -hmm. well, yes. To then include issues such as liquidity, uh, transaction efficiency, uh, other aspects as well, such as ensuring that the product that we have on the exchange is very much in demand in that location.